Good evening and welcome to Jack Dawson's Insider Racing News with Scott Allen and Joe Staples who's with us again tonight. And first tonight on the phone with us already is Rick Godovic. How you doing, Mr. Godovic? Fantastic. How are you guys doing tonight? We're doing great. And I hear you got some new stuff going on with you right now. So give us a little insight on what you got going on. Well, we, uh... Yeah, we just recently, uh, as you probably heard, we have you know, purchased the assets of uh, Viva Motorsport. They were sold through various race cars and motors and haulers and everything else in the shop and uh, yeah, formulating the plan to, to move forward. Do you have any time frame set up to when you're going to get started with that or, or are you just not, you're not really interested in getting, you know, you're going to make sure everything's right first? Well, we, we we were looking towards uh, Watkins Glen, you know, to make, uh, make that race there. So that's, uh, that's our first preparations here is to, you know, get, get all these, get some of these motors uh, that, that uh, we purchased from Middle and get the cars ready for uh, Watkins Glen. Are you going to condense your K&N operation with your Xfinity and move everything to North Carolina? Uh, we're going to move the uh, K&N program down there, and uh, we're, we're pretty you know, knee deep in the uh, you know the uh, you know, the season here with uh, Greg Alding, and uh, so it's going to be uh, you know in the next few months we're going to slowly work our way down there. We just uh, you know, a lot of lot going on in the uh, you know, race car business here. Yeah, and you know, we're trying to get you know, get the cars ready for uh, for the uh, the uh, and we'll continue to have the weight model programs and the modifieds run out of the uh, Gloucester, Virginia location. So is uh, Watkins Glen, are you shooting for because Brandon is doing so well in this uh, Lamborghini car here? Uh, it's, it's part of the yeah, development process there. I'd like to go ahead and yeah, put, them, put them in the car there and uh, it'd be a good start for us. And uh, if it doesn't do it, we'll of course you know, race them. So we, we just think it's, uh, yeah, we have enough time to go ahead and uh, put that together. Now, was this your long-term goal to get to uh, a top three NASCAR tier team when you first started the K&N stuff? Uh, it, it was fun. Uh, yeah, it's never a perfect plan that uh, some people think. It's, uh, you know, it's always going to be fun to, to get to the top three. Uh, you know, we always have to work hard at it and put the right budget and put the right sponsors. And, some things just uh, take on a, you know, life of their own as you move forward, and uh, as you see success, and uh, as we have with our development program, and help other drivers, and, you know, it's, uh, Which you know, we, we, we went out picking an uh, Xfinity team, but the opportunity arose after we got to meet the Vita group, they, they did a great job with the uh, planet uh, introduction into the series. Yeah, and I think Brandon did a great job in his, his couple of races that he did do, considering the experience that he had in those cars and so forth. I think he did a great job. Honestly, I think he probably ran just as well as about anybody else that's been in the car this year. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, they, you know, uh, yeah, Jamie did a good job, and uh, Jeffrey Earnhardt was also in there, and uh, he did a good, you know, good job uh, helping us out and uh, you know, get us to the point where we had, you know, about 25th place. Uh, expectations and that type of car and, and showed up in Texas never being in the car so uh, it would have been about 20th or 21st if we hadn't got a caution uh, uh, right after a uh, green flag pit stop but uh, we finished 25th you know, without a scratch on the car so, so we, uh, we certainly accomplished the goal well where is your shop located down in, in North Carolina I just came from Charlotte today and I, I kind of went through China Grove, but I didn't know exactly where it was located. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not really familiar with that area, so I just uh, went by now to uh, China Grove and the address, and uh, you know, it's not too far from Warsville, so, but I, I'm, I'm not really familiar that I could uh, you know, help you out on that. I'm giving you the address and... and uh, is it is it on that road that you get you going from uh, China Grove to Mooresville? Uh, I'm sorry, say it again. Is it on the road that you go from China Grove to Mooresville? 
Back by the, you know, back by the drag strip that way. Yeah, once once again, I I, I would be guessing. So oh, okay. <laughs> now, is Jamie still going to be involved with the with the team? Uh, no, no, it's fine. He, you know, he decided he wanted to exit all together, and uh, you know, we had a relationship when they uh, get called Brandon into you know, fill you know, fill the seat for him there at a couple races, and. Uh, now what's the what's the plan for the rest of the year and next season is this something next year pretty sure you're going to do a full season or are you just sort of going to fill in for the rest of the year uh, we're going to do uh, a full races you know for uh, you know, the rest of the year here maybe three races uh, you know select races uh, and then uh, you know, we'll do more you know, the, the, the state has obviously opened other drivers mm -hmm. to uh yeah, get in as well. So it's not, you know, we, we didn't buy the team just to run Brandon. You know, Brandon's part of our development program. So when he's, he's not building race cars, uh, you know, or uh, driving cars, he's helping to coach other drivers and, and uh, you know, help them along. So, yeah, so the goal is, you know, for him to you know, do select races, get more experience, and uh, you know, continue on with his other road course races, and, and, and then, uh, friends did you acquire since you you're a nationwide or an Xfinity car owner now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's been my, my, my Facebook is, uh, is full of interesting, <laughs> quest, interesting questions. Uh, you know, every day and, and uh, you know, one thing after another. And, uh, you know, what we have available job-wise and seat-wise. And, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's never a, a lack of uh, available drivers, I can, I can assure you that. <laughs> Oh, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm sure of that. So, what make a car are you are you going to run? And do you have a uh, an engine program with somebody, or what's the, what's the pro program for you right now? Uh, we we inherited uh, three three motors um, that uh, a gentleman uh, named Jeff Collins uh, inherited from his father. Um, Don't see gray in the car any? Why did why did he have to go to the back? Uh, I don't know. Motor issue. Um, he had driver introductions, and um, uh, 
everybody had to get out of the cars, and um, uh, you know, by the time everybody got back in the car, got everything sorted out. Um, you know, fan, fan, you know, fans got a huge following everywhere it goes. So yeah. uh, I think it got uh, caught up a little bit with, uh, you know, we couldn't, you know, some of the fans wanted. I don't think they were wanting to let them go and get them back in the car. So, so uh, <laughs> you know, uh, once we we unhinged them from his his fan base, we got them back in the car and. Uh, about Justin Carroll I mean he did I think we were all really proud of your team and how well he did and I think you guys uh, you know seen something I think a lot of other people may have not seen and Justin were, were really surprised and very happy for him as well as he did against some of the big teams you know right yeah he, he was just uh, he did a you know, fantastic job and uh, you know they uh, you know, it was a special program we put together for him you know, with that car that came out of our shop, and uh, he's worked out of our shop help, helping to build that car. And, uh, you know, you know, my son Brandon is, uh, you know, going to, you know, we were, the whole team was going to test with him, but uh, yeah, Brandon was able to get in the car uh, under the K&M rules, you know, on the test day to help him shake it down. And, um, you know, we took him to another, you know, uh, another test day, but he breaks out so. You know, it's just uh, uh, you know, an indicator of the development program and if you surround, you know, surround a, a quality driver with, with the right equipment and the right team and the right coaching, um, great things happen and that was just uh, it was a great night. I mean, we, we, you know, Gray was certainly, a, you know, you know, with a, you know, sort of contended for the win there and then, uh, you know, Justin equaling his best late model finish in the K&N car in his first outing was... Uh, was outstanding, um, and uh, yeah, just really proud of him and proud of the team. And I think uh, you know when you have good nights like that, it's going to attract more sponsors mm -hmm. and uh, motivate people to do more races. So I, I think he's going to you know, uh, continue to raise the bar here and, and hopefully be in some more K&N races this year and, and next year. Well, Rick, we appreciate your time tonight. I know you're going to go out and got dinner plans and everything, but we appreciate you spending a few minutes giving us an up update on your uh, Xfinity Series program. Hopefully, we'll get you back on here real soon, and we'll, we'll have some more news to pass along. Fantastic. Yeah, we appreciate the opportunity, and uh, look forward to talking to you again. Uh, we well, appreciate it, too. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Take care. Thanks. You know, he has done a good job, and he has a first-class operation, so oh, yeah. I think it probably is their next step. And Brandon is doing a heck of a job in, in that sports car class mm -hmm. that he's doing. I mean, he's won his class, I think, about every time he's been in the car, and then he's finished second overall. Yeah, he's done a great job. A few job. times, you know, so, I mean, and it's a, a really good team that he is with, so. Well, I think it's interesting that, you know, he's going to, He's, he's basically not giving the car to Brandon for next year. It's a, it's a situation where, you know, that's going to depend on sponsorship. And we know. Well, Rick's a businessman at heart. I mean, it, right. it, it, and it is all about yep. business. And, he, and he's obviously done very well uh, in that side of stuff. So I think, uh, I think you'll see a lot of different people in the car. Uh, and given opportunities yeah. too, like Justin Carroll. I mean, I can't say enough for Justin oh, yeah. Carroll, the job that he did in that k &N car. And if it wasn't for Rick and those guys, he would have not gotten yeah, that opportunity. opportunity. And, <laughs> and that just shows you never know about a guy. I mean, people talk about Earnhardt Sr. He didn't do that well in late model. Hell, Dale Jr. didn't do that well in late model. No. But once he got in the big cars with a lot more power, they excelled. And, and when you look at the, the Earnhardts, Mm -hmm. When they were coming along, all three of the kids, it, they were coming along in late models. Kelly was the driver. Mm -hmm. Dale Jr. and Kerry were not, I mean, they were just kind of like thrown in, say, all right, you know, 
all the Earnhardts are going to show up at Myrtle Beach. Well, and, you know, some of that could be because, let's face it, Dale and, and Carrie probably did a little more partying, and she was probably a little more serious about driving. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, she did, but so well, far as business side, she is very serious about that. Yeah. She is very serious about the business, and she... And, and, and Dale, and I don't know about Carrie, but I knew Dale a little bit through the late model days, and, and but you know, but you he know. was all about a good time. They were all about a good time. <laughs> I, I'm a, but they didn't. They didn't have. Uh, they did in the later years of their late model stuff get good equipment. But in the beginning and stuff, those guys didn't have time off of equipment. They didn't have full time crew members. They had five cars, five late model cars, three drivers, and they were in a barn. Mm-hmm. And out they had behind to, they had to work on property because I went out there and looked at them. Did you really? Yeah. When we were down there one time, we went out to Earnhardt's. This was before the big DEI came into right, yeah. And, and they had the, they had a barn out there. And we walked out to the barn and I look, we go inside and it's a race car shop. And those kids had to work, work on, on their the own car. cars. Yeah. And that's something and I can see him doing that. And that is something Dale Jr. has pushed even with his late model drivers that he's got now. Um, um, Josh Berry and all those guys that drive, Dale William Byron. Mm-hmm. They have to work on their own cars. Yeah. They have, and, and they're they're responsible for the upkeep right. of those cars. I mean, they're in Junior's shop, which is not right there at JR Motorsports. It's up the hill from JR Motorsports, but they're right there, and they're respon- And they're even responsible for getting the cars to the track. Right. They get a car. Yeah. I don't know exactly what all the deals are. I do know. I think everything for the car is pretty much paid for. But what they make their living on is what the car. Makes. brings in brings in so i mean if they don't do well the weekend yeah. they don't make no money or make that much money well, it definitely makes the motivation there right well, yeah Not I think that's the, the passion whole, but the, right the, and i think the that's the, the whole purpose of it yeah. and that was the way it was when they had the pro cup car um with mcfarland and and huffman they had to do their own work on their own cars and stuff mm-hmm. and it was who's next well we're supposed to have connor hall and the last time we said we were having Connor Hall, he kind of skipped out. Didn't yeah, he, he kind of let us down. And I'm hoping he's uh, ain't doing it again. Yeah, I hope he's. I talked to him twice this week, so I'm pretty sure. But anyway, while we're waiting, uh, talk about the race down at. Um, it's a great race. I mean, even before we get into the cup stuff, the nationwide stuff, they switched crews over at RCR, and Austin's still winning. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, Nick went over to Ty, and then you got who's who? Danny uh, Stockman. Danny Stockman, Danny our buddy Stockman. Danny. And those guys win Daytona. Yeah. They had a great race. And I, then, talked to, I talked to Stockman yesterday on the phone as well as – riding around down in Charlotte and he says there's a chemistry between him and Austin and when he got back behind the wheel and got back in the you know those call guys shots didn't work before did they yes they were in the, they were when they won the, the uh, nationwide nationwide championship Stockman was his crew chief okay I and thought Stockman had to come up with tie through the trucks mm-mm. I got you okay so it just felt like a, it was a an old friend back together yeah. again. It was pretty neat. I mean, it was. Um, but I mean, what about we got Benny Gordon finished fifth. Benny is an unbelievable. With he, with no equipment, honestly. Yeah, he is unbelievable. Which is if there's an equalizer. That's a brand new team. Right, but if there's ever an equalizer, Daytona is one of those places where. I mean, obviously equipment, and of course we heard out a lot in the Cup Series talking Please about the, the, the... Oh, well, we're at King's Dominion again. Hello. Connor Hall, how you doing, sir? Good, how are you? All right, this is Jack Dodson and uh, Scott Allen and Joe Staples with uh, Jack Dodson's Insider Racing News, and welcome to our Langley Speedway segment, You Are the Man. 
All right, look, give us a little background on Connor Hall and how he got started in racing and, and where he come from. Uh, I'm from Hampton, Virginia. Uh, started racing when I was about nine years old at Wendell Speedway. Uh, first go car was a birthday present, actually a Christmas present, I think. Uh, and then once I got out of cars, I to arena racing and Legends cars and that were in late model. And hopefully possibly moving to the K&N division. All right, now you, uh, you, you said you run arena cars. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I want to know about this arena stuff. I've got, I've got an arena racing legend sitting beside me. <laughs> yeah. Did you learn anything from Scott Allen? No, he, he was gone before I got started running. Oh, he was gone before you. <laughs> he had more fun. It was more fun, I think, when he drove arenas than, than, than it is now, I think. So how's your season been going so far, Connor, with everything going on out at Langley? Um, we've had a pretty good year so far. We've had a second or two, a bunch of third, uh, a bunch of consecutive top five finishes. Uh, we struggled a little bit, one or two races in the middle of the year, but uh, heading into the Hampton Heat, I'm feeling pretty confident. Now, who do, who do you still you still have Nick Smith over there with you guys? Uh, no, sir. He and my uncle, uh, with my uncle and his and uh, they split up, and he's racing for Bob Hunter today. Okay. So who's who's working on the car now for you guys? Uh, myself. Ah, oh, oh, got that's good. It's a lot of work, ain't it? Nah, <laughs> uh, not too bad. I enjoy it. I do it for I do it eight to five every day if I could. Well, that's that's good. So you said something about can and stuff. You guys, is that what your your goal is for next year? Um, I don't know if next year, because I'm going off to college, but uh, if not next year, definitely the year after. I believe it's, uh, it's definitely important to get a couple wins in the division you're in before you move up. So, going off to college, and that's kind of going to put your racing maybe on the back burner a little bit. What are your plans for the future? What, where do you see yourself maybe five years from now? Um, I'd love to see myself in a big NASCAR division. Uh, college definitely does not put racing on the back burner of my family. Uh, I like to, I like to have two front burners, but that's, that's a good analogy. But, um, yeah, my plan is to school Monday through Thursday, racing Monday through Sunday, and if I can be good at that. All right, where are you going to college at? In Sydney. Hampton, Sydney. Well, that's not far. You can make that trip back and forth. That's pretty good. Yeah, you, you're doing all right with that. Yeah, it's only an hour and a half. So, Connor, where did the number 77 come from? Uh, I was 97 until I got to arena racing, and then uh, someone had it already, and I just uh, decided to stick with 77, and won a bunch of arena races and two championships by the title of the bus to keep with it. So what is this your third year in late models or second year in late models? This is my second. Your second, okay. Wow. Now whose chassis are you guys running? Uh, Headstock Enterprise. Okay. Now, have you gone anywhere else besides running at Langley yet? No. Uh, the team back when Nick drove, we went to South Boston and Kenley, but uh, we were planning to do a bunch of traveling this year after the Hampton. Well, so you're gonna you're gonna run Langley to that through the Hampton Heat and then do some traveling. Yep, we just want to keep all our stuff fresh and as good as we can get it for the Hampton Heat. Mm -hmm. Are you looking towards Martinsville at the end of the year? The big race at Martinsville, of course, Myrtle Beach at the end of the year. Are you looking towards those races too? Um, maybe definitely Myrtle Beach, Martinsville. No, if they did not have the ten to go Boston, I definitely run the race. But that ten to go Boston is pretty a lot of trouble. Yeah, it does create does tear up a few cars on that ten to go to the caution. Yeah, <laughs> a few. I, yeah, I've I've kind of watched that. That's not. That's not. I, I agree with you. That would probably not be something I'd want to do either. So, so Connor, where where is your shop located over there in Hampton? Where do and where do you work out of? Well, I live down in a little part of Hampton called Knoxville, and uh, I wake up walk about ten yards out my front door and there. Oh, man, that's pretty good. You ain't got to go far. 
I can hear it. Close enough, I can hear it. My own meow tenor and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're still hanging in there with mom, huh? Oh, yeah, mom's the best friend. Mom's the best friend. So who's the big race family, or who's the big race person in your family? So when you, who whose idea was it to get you to go-kart? Was that your idea? Because I think your family's been around the racetrack forever, if I can remember correctly. I'm not related to the halls that run Langley. Um, okay. I had Erin, the Miss Budweiser, on the mid-hydroplane. She is a seven-time uh, world champion in that, and my mom was a great. so she was always into the car stuff. And when uh, my dad was my son died, my dad was like, "Well, Denise, let's, let's get him a let's get him a race boat." And she said, "No, no, I think too many of your friends died, so let's let's build him a good one." So that's how it started. No, that's cool. Anything else? Well, Connor, we appreciate your time tonight. We're uh. We're kind of running behind on time a little bit, but we'll uh, we'll get you back on here real soon. Hopefully, we'll hear from you about uh, a big win out at the Hampton Heat. Oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would say for anybody. And, we'll, and, and we'll see you out there. We'll be out there that night. All right, sounds good. Thank All right, man, man, we'll talk to you later. All right, thanks, Connor. Good luck, bud. And that's Connor Hall with our Langley Speedway segment. <laughs> yeah. Connor's a, he's a quiet kid. Yeah, he. Yeah. I was. Yeah, he's got to pull out. Yeah, of I was. You. I was feeling we were, we were losing him there at one point. <laughs> yeah, yeah he was, but he, he is a good kid. He yeah. is is a good kid out there. I'm gonna have to talk to him about the boat racing because I do know his family. Okay, I was really, wondering. Yeah, the unlimited hydroplane. They've been in for quite some time, and there's actually a lot of people from Hampton area. That is that have, right? Yeah, that's involved. Scott Lindicoat. Uh, you've got uh, uh, Valerie Wilson. Uh, and Chris Hall is, is one of the guys, and I believe he's related to Chris Hall. But I think, did he, who did he say was his dad? Some one of his dad was working with the Miss Budweiser. Yeah, Miss Budweiser, which was Bernie Little. Uh, Call from seven, zero, four, nine, five, seven, four, zero, zero. All right, join right us on door. join us on the show now. It's, how you doing, Mr. Graves? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for being on the show tonight. We appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man and got a lot going on. We appreciate the time you have with us. One of the things I want to no problem at all. Thank you for having me on. One of the things I want to talk about. You got the big test coming up tomorrow at Kentucky. And how does things look? With I was down at Michael Waltrip's shop yesterday. And how does things look as far as the new car? and the new rules for the Toyota camp. How does that look for y'all? Well, we, we think it's a, a great opportunity with the shakeup of the rules to uh, try to try to get ourselves better prepared than the competition. Uh, you know, with, with the new rules package, uh, all, all these teams are so tough uh, and, and so talented. It's just, uh, given the time, that, that everybody can get it sorted out. But, we look at this as a good opportunity. So we're really excited to go to Kentucky, and especially so close to uh, Georgetown and where they, they produce all these cameras. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be a special race for us. Is there any chance down the road somewhere, and I've read in the past where Toyota is not looking to add any teams, but do you see a possibility of that? I mean, you've got, you've got some of the best cars in the Xfinity Series. But it seems like in the Cup Series, uh, the Gibbs cars are the top of the line, and the Waltrip guys are having a little bit of a, a tough time. Do you see them adding any more cars or anything further for the uh, Cup Series? Well, just like you said, I definitely the, the Gibbs guys, uh, you know, they do a great job, and, and, and they've been strong to have all four drivers get a win this year. And uh, the MWR guys have uh, it, had a little bit of a down year and, and, and they've struggled, but they're, they're really starting to make a good comeback. And we're looking forward to this half the season with them and, and uh, get Clint and, and David win. Um, but it, it, as far as our car count, you know, if the opportunity presents itself to add another uh, new caliber team, uh, then of course we would look at it and, and welcome that. Uh, you know, you could hard when you, you see, uh, especially in the Chevy camp, all the talented cars, uh, you know, and, and feel like we probably need a couple more uh, bullets in, the, in, in our gun for sure. 
so Andy, y'all share a lot. Y'all are a little different. When y'all when Toyota came in, I know the truck series. Y'all shared a lot of information. Y'all, the manufacturers actually built the trucks and engines and so forth. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And, and are you guys still doing that? Y'all do that all, kind of like all the way up to Cup Series. We do not do that anymore. Um, you know, that that was definitely uh, a situation uh, that is the ideal model. Yeah. Uh, I think it works really well. And, and you know, Toyota started that, um, like you said, in 2004 when, when they entered the truck series. Um, I was not a part of the organization at that time, and um, but they did it right. And, and that's a super good model. It's just to, to do that on the cup level would require so much funding and uh, resource to do that for all the teams that uh, it, it just it's not really feasible uh, at, at this level. When you're talking about when you have organizations uh, the size of Gibbs or Hendrick or Stuart Hoff, uh, the, you know, those organizations that have uh, five or six hundred people uh, and, and all those talented people in there working, uh, no, no one manufacturer could to be able to produce all the equipment for the organizations, um, you know, that, that fly under their umbrella. Whereas in the truck series, the smaller teams, uh, it, it was easier for us to do that. Now, give us a little bit about what your duties are as vice president of the competition. How how much do you work with the teams? I mean, I've seen you around the track. You know, you're 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 involved with a lot of things, but. How much do you work with the teams as far as sharing information back and forth between the teams? Yeah, I've worked up pretty close with them. Uh, you know, this year uh, the, the duties and responsibilities have grown for sure uh, in 2015 for myself. And uh, between overseeing the chassis uh, operations building in Salisbury and also the engine shop in Costa Mesa, California, uh, overseeing both of those uh, organ facilities. Uh, it, it, and I usually spend uh, two days uh, out in California about every other week. So it, it keeps me busy and going to the racetrack on every single week and, and sitting in the competition meetings with, with both organizations. So it, uh, it's, it's more than a full-time job for sure. Do you ever see if you could get both or all the Toyota teams to sort of share information. I know it's very hard because, I mean, once one team gets a, gets an edge, they don't really want to share that. I mean, I understand that we've all been in the sport. Do you ever think you guys will ever get to the point to you could all kind of sort of share a lot of the information? Well, there's, there is a ton of information that does get shared. And, you know, it, it, in uh, the way that the racing is, has grown over the years and in the current state that it's in. You know, you, you even see major organizations, uh, you even just Joe Gibbs Racing itself with the four teams and all the data that is there to, to look at just inside their own organization. Mm -hmm. it, it's hard to get all four of their teams to all be on the same page. It, it's, a, it's a major exercise in trying to sift through data and, and organize your time and to focus on certain uh, reams of data and, and, and to skim over other reams of data. So it, it's hard inside that organization. And, you know, I think, uh, I guess to answer your question, you know, we, we do share, we don't share everything between the organizations, but there is a, a ton that is shared. Mm -hmm. um, but just because you have the data sitting in front of you, that, that doesn't always translate to the exact same thing when you put it on the right track. Well, are there anything anything's coming along that uh, as far as Toyota making some other changes like in body types or anything like that in the future? Well, you know, we were the first one uh, 2015 here. We've got a brand new car. Uh, we've, we've been the first ones that have introduced um, a, a second Gen 6 model. Uh, so we've, we've been proud of that. And, and it, we definitely, it took us a little bit of a learning curve. Uh, the, the first uh, five, six, seven races of the season to, to get to understand it completely. But uh, we're, we're really happy with it right now, and, and it's looking good, and we don't, uh, we don't plan on anything new for 2016. With the new rules changes, 
how much how much of are you involved with NASCAR as far as the rule change? How much does Toyota get get a say so in the rule changes with NASCAR? Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, quite a bit. I mean, obviously, um, I've got a great relationship with Robin Pemberton and Steve O'Donnell and Mike Elton, Gene mm-hmm. Stephanie. Every, everyone at NASCAR, and um, you know, we, we we try our best to, to be good citizens and, and and to help them understand what's best for the sport in the series. And uh, you know, so that that's we, we run simulations for them from time to time. Uh, we we do run we do wind tunnel tests for them from time to time, and and just try to help them overall with the vision and. What we feel might be a better product, but on the racetrack, so it, it's definitely a lot of interaction for sure. Do does Toyota have their own wind tunnel, or uh, and that you all use, or do you still use the one there in uh, Mooresville? Uh, we we run we do not have our own wind tunnel. Uh, we use the one in Mooresville, and we also use the one in Congress. So uh, the, the two. The two wind tunnels that are here uh, close by, we, we, we utilize both of them. So, Andy, what got you into racing? I didn't I didn't know until I was sniffing through your your Facebook that that your dad raced, and and, and I got, I'm, I'm assuming that's uh, what what did your dad race, and I'm sure that's what got you into racing. Yeah, it is. Uh, so I I grew up in upstate New York, and uh, my my father started racing uh, actually a year or two before I was born, and he ran super modified to the Swigo Speedway uh, in New York. So. You know, ever since uh, I can remember, I've always been around race cars, and um, you know, I started working in my father's speed shop when I was 12 years old, and uh, you know, it's just uh, I've never I've never held a, a real job. I guess <laughs> <laughs> I've always been in racing uh, my entire life, and uh, it, it it's so wonderful to be able to make a career and a living out of. Uh, doing something that you truly love and uh, I've been I've been very blessed for that so what is, what's your favorite racetrack um I like uh I like Phoenix a lot I've always I've always enjoyed Phoenix and uh I also I really like uh, Dilver so uh hmm. those, those are two of my favorites uh you know on, on the current schedule I wish that uh I wish we still were in Rockingham yeah. Rockingham was uh, Rockingham used to be one of my all-time favorites. It was uh, such a great track with uh, so much character. Andy, give us a little a little background on your of the teams and stuff that you worked with along the years. I know you've been around for a while, so give us a little background on that. Sure. Yeah, I I got into the, into the sport and NASCAR. Um, well, I, actually, I, I guess I, I started in the first time I worked in NASCAR was in 1988. I was a crew member for Doug Everong's NASCAR Modified Series, and uh, and then after that, I uh, I went to work for Jeff Gordon and his father, the father John Bickford, on, on their sprint cars and midgets. But uh, when I got, I got hired in 1990, uh, when I was 20 years old, by Hendrick Motorsport to uh, help Gary Dehart start chassis shop uh, so we, we we actually started that with a handful of people and um, through the ranks I, I spent uh, a little over nine years at, at Hendrick Burst worked and, and went from an uh, entry level fabricator to help start the chassis shop to um, all the way up to, to crew chief the five car and um, you know, we were very fortunate to to uh, win a championship at 96 with Terry and, and Gary uh, as the assistant crew chief um, and uh, when, then went on to crew chief Ricky Craven and then went back to Terry as uh, the official crew chief for a couple of years. Uh, so that was that was a great stint. I uh, love working at Hendrick Marsh Sports and love Mr. Hendrick. Uh, they're, they're great people. And decided, had the opportunity in 2000 uh, to go to work for Chip Ganassi, and he asked me to go to work for him, actually, to run his Indy 500 program in, in 2000 with Juan Montoya and Jimmy Vassar. And 
growing up in uh, upstate New York as an open wheel guy, um, you know, Indy was always my ultimate dream. And when you have an opportunity to uh, move from a four-time NASCAR championship organization to a four-time IndyCar champion organization, then to go back to Indy with the Juan McClay and to be Bachelor, it's kind of hard to pass up. So I jumped at that chance and uh, had the full blessing of Mr. Hendrick and went to Indy in 2000 as team manager and, and won the race with Juan. Uh, so that was uh, as a hell of an opportunity and and then as soon as we got done with Indy uh, Chip actually came to an agreement with Felix about us to become the majority uh, stakeholder of, of his race team and I moved back to Charlotte and was the manager for him until 2006 when um, I decided to uh, have the opportunity and Toyota was getting ready to enter the Cup Series in 2007, and they were looking for a program manager. And uh, my relationship with Lee White at that time, uh, which actually started in 2000 when I was working for Mr. Ganassi, uh, because uh, Chip switched his car team to Toyota. Uh, it was just a, a natural fit, and it was uh, time for me to, to, to take the next uh, career move. So, And I'm uh, nine years later, I'm... I'm here at Toyota, so I've been very fortunate to, in 25 years in the sport, uh, in the Cup Series, to have uh, I've only worked in three places and uh, three great organizations. So can't can't say enough about each one of them. Yeah. You've well, you've managed to work in in probably the, you know with Ganassi and 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 with Hendrick. You've worked with with with, with the, the upper echelon <laughs> teams. Yeah. How much did you take from working with the Hendrick? take with you as you go to other places and other jobs, what you learned there, how did, how did that affect you? Uh, I mean, it's everything. Um, you know, I I was very, very fortunate growing up. You know, my, my I, can't, I can't say enough about my father and what he's built in me. Um, you know, my dad, Freddie Graves, was, he's a, uh, He's a Hall of Famer and a legend in the Super Modified Series and what he instilled in me. And, and to be able to work around people like Richie Evans and, and Jimmy Champagne and Bentley Warren and Doug Hebron in Super Modified uh, set a, a foundation for me. And then as I moved to Hendrick and uh, got an uh, opportunity to work with Ken Howes and Jerry Dehar, Randy Dorton, I mean, to, to work with those people day in, day out, and the lessons you learn, and the, the le- and what you take as your foundation, and then to move to um, Ganassi and work with Tom Anderson, and Mike Hall, and Julian Robertson, uh, Rob Hill. It, it, again, it, would, it gave me such a, a huge opportunity to take lessons from a a four-time champion NASCAR organization and a four-time car championship organization and and, and take all those worlds and blend them together. So um, it's it's truly helped me, make me um, more well-rounded, I believe. And and again, it's because of the people that I've worked with and and, and the the way that Mr. Hendrick and and Chip both run their organizations and their leadership style um, it's had a huge influence on me as well. Now, you, you said you worked with, with Jeff Gordon and, and John Bickford. Um, now Jeff's getting ready to retire. What was it like working with him back in his sprint car days? I mean, you know, I remember him from those days, but I'm, you know, I'm not really, I'm not really up on his sprint car time, but I remember when he came into the series. But what was it like working for him back in the sprint car time and now to see him be, he's going to retire? Yeah, it, it's been it's been pretty neat. The uh, you know the the years that I've spent with Jeff. I, I first met Jeff in 1989. Uh, Hoosier Racing Tire put us together when really the sprint cars were just starting on asphalt, and Thursday Night Thunder was just getting started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, we we went to Sandusky, Ohio. That was the first place we ever met, and. We set fast time. You know, Hoosier asked me to be a consultant and help them out because they had never been to Sandusky, Ohio before, uh, whereas the Supers run 
that all the time. And uh, setting fast time and then lapping the field in the future, <laughs> we just, uh, an 18 and 19 year old kid, uh, we, we obviously struck up a, a fast friendship. And from there, I, I went back home and about six months later, packed up all my stuff and, and moved to Pittsburgh, Indiana to work for, for Jeff and John Vickford full time. So, um, you know, through that, I, I lived with them in their house with them. And then Jeff and I both moved to, to the Charlotte area at the same time. I went to work for Hendrick. He went to the drive for Bill Davis in the floor mm-hmm. camp. Um, but we, we shared an apartment together for a year in Charlotte, and then we bought actually bought a house together. And so there was about six years there where we actually lived together and, and hung out together all the time. And uh, I actually am the one that introduced him to, so to Mr. Hendrick, which ultimately he signed. So That was going to be my next question. I was wondering if you were the one that were in the shop that Rick always talks about that was roommates with Jeff. Now, did you see – the potential in Jeff when y'all were doing the sprint car stuff? Oh, yeah, right right away. You know, um, at that time, right before I had met Jeff, he, he had actually just won. You know, he, he had always, Jeff had a reputation as, uh, always had the spotlight on him as a 13-year-old kid racing sprint car, so I'd always heard of him or, you know, read about him in Open Wheel magazine. <laughs> but, um, you know, he had just won a huge uh, mix race uh, only a month before I met him. And there was a lot of buzz of, about Jeff. And then when we got together and I, I saw how smooth he was and, and how smart he was as a driver, um, I, I knew he was really special. And, um, you know, that that year, uh, the end of 89 and, and all in 1990, when, when we worked together on the sprint cars, and, and ran Thursday night under. I mean, I, I think we won about we won about seventy percent of the races we entered. It was uh, it was a unbelievable year, and uh, we had a lot of fun. And uh, it just uh, it just leapfrogged from there. Now, now, I got I got to ask because I always th- hear the story with Ray says the first time that he met Jeff and he had a briefcase and I had a cell phone and a hot rod magazine or something in it. How much did Jeff work on the car? I mean, the way Ray talked, that Jeff really didn't know anything about the car, but he could certainly drive one, obviously. <laughs> oh, he can drive one. But, uh, yeah, it's scary if you ever saw him have to actually work on one. Uh, <laughs> I know that that first year that I moved there, um, uh, John Bickford told me, he said, hey, he goes, you can work on you work on the rest of the car, you make sure Jeff with his own seat and we need him to do something and I, I started watching him sit around his own seat and uh, I told him real quick I said I'll tell you what but I'll, I'll take let me take care of that <laughs> you just do <laughs> so, but uh, you know all, all, all kidding aside that might not be the, the greatest mechanic but he is <laughs> extremely sharp and he knows all about the race car he is, uh, well, he sure makes he up for it behind the wheel, so it doesn't matter. He don't have to work on it, but it's just still funny, you know. That's right. Um, how much most of us that had to work on our own stuff and, and put it together and go racing, and, and here Jeff doesn't know anything about it, but it well, worked out for him. <laughs> well, I've been around. Yeah, Jeff. It, it, go ahead. I said, yeah, that, that, that's right. And, and again, believe me, the, the, the only thing that I mix up the, the fact. He's very, very sharp about the car and what he needs in the car, um, and, and and is very open to suggesting what he wants in the car. It's just a matter of uh, he, he's 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 a lot more talented in other things than spinning been in the Now, was he very good at like uh, giving you information on the car, uh, how it's doing? I'm sure that's probably where he excelled. The, yeah, the uh, feedback. He's unbelievable with his feedback. Yeah, he's extremely good with feedback and was. I always very quick if you suggested a change and he didn't think that that was really what he needed. He, he was he was always uh, uh, very good in, in communicating that back to you. So uh, Jeff is, again, I, I, I've been very, very fortunate to work with a ton of great drivers. Uh, and um, Jeff is the smartest driver that I've worked around by far. Uh, Probably Jeff and Matt Kansas are, are the two smartest guys. You know, I've been around Jeff the last couple of years. My son is 
is the front end suspension specialist on the on the 24 and I've been around him a lot and he know he knows more than a lot of people give him credit for. Well, I think now. <laughs> <laughs> he he knows his stuff and he knows exactly how he wants things. You're right. He and he's he's one of the top top of the line as far as giving them information. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And that, that's why I said before, don't don't mix up the fact that he might not be the greatest mechanic. That that didn't mean that he didn't know uh what each part of the car did and, and, and you know, what he could manipulate in order to get what he wants the car to do. So yeah. uh, he's just he's extremely intelligent from that aspect. All right, I got a good friend of mine, as you know. Do, do you keep Rooster straight? <laughs> Rooster keeps me straight. Now, come on now. <laughs> I don't see much Rooster can keep straight. <laughs> yeah, Rooster Ru- 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 and Maria are, are their awesome. Uh, yeah. You know, they, they, they keep our engineering coach uh, 100% spotless and, uh, and always make sure they're on time. They do a great job. Yeah, yeah. He's always good for a laugh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, what, what's one of your fondest memories of racing throughout the years, whether it's working on the car or, or just overseeing a team? One of my fondest memories? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I think for me, um, you know, that, 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 that there's no doubt that that, that day uh, winning the Indianapolis 500 in 2000 is uh, huge. Uh, that that uh, that was a huge day for me. To, between our two cars, um, I think we led 187 out of the 200 laps. Um, so to, to go there and to do that at Indy and dominate like that and just win the Indy 500 was special. And then obviously the you know the day at Atlanta uh, in '96 with Terry and winning the championship um, there was was huge. But if, if I had to pick the one the one time the Martinsville race in the fall of '96 when we were in the middle of that championship battle was. Actually, with the 24 and Jeff, and uh, I had to dive in the car during the race and, and fix the brake pedal um, during the race, and then saved us from having a disastrous day. And, and uh, we finished second that day. That I think that that's probably the the hugest memory I have. And I, I still have people walk up to me at the racetrack these days and, and want to talk about that time. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Now you used to go over the wall too, right? Yeah, I was um, there for probably four or five years. I was the retired carrier, and I uh, was uh, part of the championship crew uh, in '96 as well. Yep. So you've had a lot of experiences in racing, and I tell you what, it, you you you've got a you, you've got a lot of a, a lot of memories that that go back mm-hmm. a long ways. But one thing I saw today, you had something about Kenny Irwin. Did you ever work with Kenny Irwin? Yeah, I'll tell you a little story. In um, in uh, when when Kenny got killed, we had just made Chip had just made the deal with Felix to buy Sapco. Um, so we were actually there. They were in the middle of the paperwork. Uh, so so people, Chip didn't actually own the team, but we had a letter of intent to buy it. And uh, I was i had already been hired as the team manager and was in there working and trying to help the Sapco guys, and we were actually in the wind tunnel um, working on our dodges at that time for the 2001 race season, and I got the phone call from a spotter, and uh, Kenny had just gotten killed, and uh, it was devastating news. And, and the, the bad thing, I had just the week before at Daytona, I was supposed to go down there and go to dinner with Kenny and his parents. Um, I had been seeing them in the race shop the, you know, the, the, the couple of weeks before that. And Kenny and I had been friends for such a long time because I actually worked for Bobby's on the side when I was uh, living in Indiana, working for Jeff and Ron. And when Kenny Irwin and his father, Kenny Irwin Sr., when they bought their first midget, they bought it from Bobby, and I, I asked, they asked Bob to full assemble the car, and Bob hired me to put it together. So I actually built Kenny's very first midget hmm. and helped them a bunch at the start. So I've known him for such a 
such a long time, and, and he, Kenny was so excited that I was joining the team, and, and we we're going to have, uh, you know, be able to go racing together with, with Chip. And uh, it's it such a heartbreaker to, to hear that news. Mm. Yeah, he was a. I, I, it's no telling where his talent would have got him in 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 racing if he'd have been around with us for longer than he was. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's a shame, you know, uh, going up around the USAC ranks, you know, to, to, to have to be friends and then work with uh, guys like Jeff and Kenny, uh, Tony Stewart, Jason Leffler. You know, I, I've, I've been very fortunate to, to, to work with all those guys and, you know, unbelievable talent each and every one of those guys were. And uh, it's sad to, to have... You know, Kenny and Jason not not be with us today, and, and mm. both of them to lose their lives doing what they love to do. It, it's hard when you you know, honestly, mm. we spend more time around the race team guys and the drivers than you even do your family. In yeah. sport. And um, and they they become your family. So a, a family. Well, Andy, we appreciate your time tonight. It was really great to have you on. I've been trying for a long time to get you on because I do admire what you do. I've, I've always kept up with things that you are involved with. I see you around the track when I'm there. I tried to run up to a, to you a couple times at Dover, but you got away from me. But <laughs> I really, I really appreciate you taking time to be with us tonight. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me on. It's been great, man. I know we've been trying to catch up, and I apologize for taking this long. But uh, thanks again for having me. Well, no, thank, thank you for you. thank you for spending time with us, and we'll talk to you again real soon, hopefully. All right, that sounds good. All thank right, you. man, thanks a lot. Okay, bye. Man, you talk about somebody that really has got an A one college degree in racing. Race, racing. I mean, yeah. you can't ask for, but you know what? He in, in, in Indy like that. Yeah, yes. but I mean, to work at Hendrick Motorsports and pretty much come in as like a Steve Letarte and start out sweeping the floors pretty much to building their chassis yep. shop, which is the premier mm -hmm. chassis shop of, of the Cup Series right now, and to be a crew chief, win a championship, win a couple races as a crew chief, IRL, Chip Ganassi, I mean, that says a lot about him and his work ethic work ethic. and all the all the open wheel stuff that he did before he got there got yeah. there and i didn't know that his dad raced that stuff until i was looking for some pictures for the for the show and then i seen that his dad raced oh, yeah the super late model yeah yeah so I, that's what I maybe asked about his dad and i know he's him and his dad are very close or seem to be very which is which is great that was a that was the big thing on uh wild world of sports every year was the new york race when they have those open wheel modifiers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember yep. that? Yep, I and sure that did. Was, that was a big thing on TV. So that and, was cool. And then when they moved to that Thursday night thunder stuff that Jeff yeah. was so involved yeah. with, that really that really propelled a lot of guys along that that you normally wouldn't have seen there like that. But it was uh it well, was a good one. Jeff was a big name in the open wheel. Oh he yeah. used to go to Salem Speedway and watch him race the open wheels. He's kinda of come along at the right time. He just, I mean, he just fell into the the right situations as he moved along. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, he was at Bill Davis, and, and he was Ford's hope for the future at one point. They were but really they, did, they, did, they didn't get a contract. Nope, they didn't get the contract. Yeah, I mean, things would be so different. you imagine if Ford would have just signed a contract? And can you, and yeah, and can you imagine? He may have never drove for Rick Hendrick. I mean, you know, that could have been – yeah, something that would never happen, and Rick Slick just not. And that sort of propelled Hendrick Motorsports to what it is today. I mean, Hendrick, they were a good team at the time, I mean, but they Hendrick, weren't what they are today. When no. Jeff came on over there, um, Jeff Bodine was the first driver there, and, Ricky and Rudd. he won a race. Ricky Rudd oh. came in, he won a race or two. Um, Daryl Waltrip came over there, and he won two or three races, but no championships. Mm -hmm. None of that was there. Until Terry Labonte came along and, and, and Andy and that group, and then Jeff Gordon came in. Well, there. Jeff won the first championship at Hendrick Motorsports. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're right. Because um, I, I remember his conversation when he wanted to go to Cup, or I remember Rick talking about it, and one of the things that uh, he told Rick, he says he, he wanted to win a championship, 
but he wanted to win one now against Earnhardt because he didn't want to hear that, well, you never raced against yes. Earnhardt and won a championship against yeah. Earnhardt. And you got to give the kid that old milk drink or milk cup, uh, you toast. know, the, the toast at the banquet that year because Jeff had won and he was still, what was he? he was 20 years old, I think, or 19 or something like that and won a championship. He was. By he, just a mere 26 points at that time. But, and, you know, there was a lot made of. Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt's little rivalry they had going on, but yet the two of them were best of friends. Yeah, yeah. they, they had, didn't have a lot in common except racing. Yeah, right. and then and they business. Went, yeah, they went into business together. A lot I mean, of business. But you know that that shows how smart. I mean, I know Dale Senior only had a, a fifth or sixth grade education, but Earnhardt seen the potential in Jeff Gordon and knew that. Him, them two had all the pull so far as souvenirs. His senior had his own souvenir department at that time, right. and then when Jeff come along, he sold it off, and then they merged with Chance Two or Chance Chase Racing, Chase, and and, and signed all the other drivers. Because I mean, who else are you gonna go to? That's right. Chase Authentics was the big thing at that point. I mean, mm -hmm. they were they were the ones. But uh, and it's a it's a it's really neat to to look back on those those things how they come along because I mean, you know, I was a little felt. You was what? I, I was, <laughs> I was <laughs> never a little. You were never a little. I was a, one of those that grew up he during was, those times. He was times. young. He was young. Yeah. I, well, was, I was in Atlanta when Terry won. Right, okay. And, 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 and that's what I missed about Atlanta because Atlanta was always the last the last race of the year. The right. year you and know? was that when the, the front stretch was on the back stretch and the yes. back stretch yes. was on yes. the front stretch? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I haven't been to Atlanta, but I do. I went. My first uh, cup races and stuff was at Rockingham. Do you know the first time I went to Atlanta after the reconfiguration? I drove the racetrack. I got to go to Richard Petty Driving School. Oh, so really? That was the first time I'd been there since they reconfigured the track. Mm. And and then I was there um, with the first race, the ARCA race, when Jeff Bodine sat on the pole for the first ARCA race there. I remember that uh, too. Yeah. And, that was and I was time. there. I mean, me and my son were there, and it was freezing cold mm -hmm. down there then. Lee was born then? Yeah. <laughs> Don't go there. And then uh, the year um, Richard Petty's last race. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, I was there in Richard Petty and Kowicki, and it was Jeff Gordon's first cup race. Was that his first cup race? That was his first cup start. Okay. Because they made a big deal out of it being his first cup start and Richard Petty's last cup start. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know if it was his very first race it was or his very it was first a start to his seat, you know, or his something. very first, and Kowicki sure. won the championship. Oh, that was that was That, that was all the same year. Yeah. Oh, all, I didn't know that. It was all the same year. And my daughter was a diehard Kowicki fan. She loved Alan Kowicki. And that was a big deal to her. Big deal for me to be there to see Richard now, Petty's last race. Well, you know, uh, Joe there. Yeah, Joe. Yeah, Joe. Was we had, the yeah. yeah, and he worked for the team, and yeah. we had him on the show. And that was pretty, I mean, that's a pretty cool, and that was a cool mm -hmm. time to be. Well, there's always, it's always a cool time to be in the in racing and so forth. But, I mean, well, that was a. I had a friend team. that worked for FAA, and their headquarters are their, uh, what do you call it, the radio station that they monitor the tra air traffic is right outside of the yep. raceway. Yeah. Okay, well, a friend of mine works there. Mm. And when, Alan, when the plane crashed, she called us and let us know that Alan Quickie's plane was down. Mm. And, of course, that was a very gut-wrenching yeah. night because, you know, Alan Quickie was, was one of my heroes. Well, he, and he was my daughter's, and I'm, I'll never forget, he wrecked, and, I mean, um, he crashed, but the, the, the next day at Bristol, when they took the truck out of Bristol, and mm -hmm. he made that that truck made yeah. that lap around Bristol yeah. Speedway, my daughter sat there and cried like a baby. And I, you know, I just I never thought racing was a, would affect her in that regard. Right. But I've learned that you know racing was a big deal to her too. And how old was she at the time? She was probably 12, 13. Gosh. And I'll never forget we got her up that morning and we told her what happened. You know, and she cried like a baby. That was. Mm -hmm. And then she became a Jimmy Hensley fan because Jimmy Hensley went in the car after Kowicki. Yeah, I remember. And that. Mm -hmm. you know he she really became a big Jimmy Hensley fan. But Jimmy's it's just nice weird. Guy. It's just weird how all those things play out. But this weekend at Daytona, 
before we get to the big crash, because we got a, a few minutes to kill before uh, who, who do Kevin we got? Bellacourt. Kevin comes on. I mean, talk about some of the top five, like we talked about Benny Gordon. Uh, a kid just bought that race team. Benny's, yeah. Benny's been trying, and I'm going to try to get him on the show. I know him, I know him from when he was in the Pro Cup Series. He mm-hmm. is – I mean, he's been trying for years to get into NASCAR, mm-hmm. and it just hasn't worked out. It's like out his much. name just won't die. Yeah. It, <laughs> I mean, it, it, just, just, it just sort of keeps coming back. I mean, he's crew chief. He's been on a pit crew. Mm-hmm. He's done everything he could do since he was driving a Pro Cup car. He won, like, three or four Pro Cup championships. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy was the was the big guy. He just can't like, seem to get a good ride. No, and I think he's... Uh, with his own team now, he may may show him something. But I mean, a top five at Daytona. Well, that's awesome. Too. I mean, oh, yeah. for for you know, uh, Dakota Armstrong six, David Reagan. I didn't know that uh, he was going to be in a Gibbs uh, Xfinity car, but that was already signed sealed before he left over there. Okay, uh, Eric Jones. He just keeps impressing us right. so, uh, Harrison Rhodes. I don't even know who this kid is. Harrison top nine. JD Motorsports. Okay, that's right. Okay. He's a uh, teammate with Landon Castle and um, Ross JJ. Chastain. Ross oh. Chastain. Okay. And uh, that was his and best. Ross Chastain, uh, top ten. I mean, that was his best finish ever right there. Mm-hmm. So, so I mean, Tommy Hill, 11th. I mean, those are – I mean, they're, they're out running Ryan Reed, Chris, uh, Chris Buescher, Joey Logano, David Suarez. Or, well, you know, Peyton but, Sellers, 16th. Well, we're not going to say they outrun them. Well, they finished in front of them. They finished in front of them. And how, how does Al say that? It was a, it was a demolition <laughs> derby, derby. Yeah. in those races. I mean, that, the whole weekend was a demolition derby, really. Yeah. I mean, you, we all got to say thank goodness for, for everything that nobody seriously got hurt, got hurt. And after the flag stand there at, at Daytona. And, and I can't. I would think that they, they've got to separate the cars some. I know everybody loves those pack races because there's kind of more passing. I think, it, to me, I actually loved it when they had the well, two-car tandem and they all so they were all wait. sort of spread out, and let's, then they all sort of – Let's wait and see what happens this weekend with, with the, the rule with the changes. changes. With the rule changes. Yeah. Because from what I'm hearing, these rule changes are going to be – they're going to be a, an experiment that's going to – it's, it's, it's going to be big for somebody, and somebody's not going to get it. And Call it's, from seven, yeah. zero, four, Trevor Bain, eight, top two, ten, his first top zero, ten in the cup car, and their second three, top ten for six, Roush six, Racing. And joining us now on the show is Kevin Bellacourt. How you doing, Kevin? I'm doing good. How are you? All right. I got uh, Scott Allen and Joe Staples here with us on the show tonight. And, man, give us a little background of what happened up at Columbus this week. Well, Columbus didn't go as good as some of our races have this year. Uh, we, uh, we, I think it's like it's a balance how William wanted it to be, and uh, we definitely didn't qualify how we're used to. Uh, our average start position before this weekend was probably like uh, fourth or so, and uh, we qualified 13th, and uh, William did a great job to start the race, started picking his way through the field, got ourselves up to about, uh, about eighth or ninth, and uh, just had a mistake on a restart and missed the shift and got us shuffled back again to about 13th, but... He kept digging and got back up to about uh, six, and then got caught up in a, in a couple of wrecks. And uh, long story short, uh, he did a good job. Stayed on the lead lap all night, and uh, we ended up uh, 13th, which is right where we started. So we made the best out of a uh, out of not a best night for sure. Where's, where's well, Kevin, I've 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 known you. Well, I've not really known you, but I've known of you for a long time. How did you end up over at H. Scott uh, Motorsports? As a crew chief over there, for for a, for a guy who's got a lot of talent, William Byron. Yeah, well, I uh, I started eleven years ago working on Arthur cars and, and just worked my way up through the sport and uh, ended up getting a great opportunity to come to the uh, to the K and N shop uh, three years ago and I car chief for Ben Rhodes uh, for two years and then got the opportunity to move up to the crew chief position this year and I uh, couldn't be luckier than uh, having a driver like William Byron as, uh, as my guy with my first year as full-time crew chief. Um, I appreciate the opportunity that Harry and Justin March gave me, and uh, uh, William has definitely been uh, been awesome to work with, and we've definitely made the best out of it so far. Well, it's got to be interesting, the two of you guys. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you're a young guy, he's a young guy, mm-hmm. and it seems like it, that combination is really working good. Uh, it, it's awesome. Um, I'm not – I mean – 
speaking from uh, from my side of it, uh, obviously uh, it, it, a lot of the drivers now are young, so uh, pretty much that's what you're going to have. But uh, being a younger big team um, and, and a David's first year, it, uh, it's definitely uh, different being the crew chief and playing that role. But uh, um, it, I think it helps. I think it helps uh, help, help him uh, being able to relate to me. Um, being a little bit younger, maybe it's a little bit less intimidating for him. I don't know for mm-hmm. sure, but uh, just uh, maybe it makes it easier for him. And uh, we definitely understand each other well, and uh, um, that's something that uh, doesn't happen all the time. So we uh, we don't take it for granted. We know that we're fortunate to have the type of relationship that we have and to uh, have the success that we have, and uh, we're just going to hope to uh, keep it going. If, as a crew chief, you you've worked for some other guys along the way, who you kind of model yourself after? Well, um, I uh, actually, uh, I, somebody I never actually worked under, but somebody I got to work with, uh, Trent Owens, who is uh, a crew chief at uh, Richard Petty Motorsports, I'm Aaron Tomorrow's car. Just somebody that I always watched, and uh, the way he uh, he carried himself, and the way he handled situations, he's a, uh, he's a good leader, and uh, one of them guys that was always approachable, uh, always somebody that the guys could talk to, stay calm, under pressure, and uh, never really let things get to him. So, as a became a crew chief, I kind of tried to remember how he handled situations and uh, ways that he did things and uh, tried to uh, try to model myself a little bit after that. Trent's a really, really calm guy, so I'm not, uh, I try to be that calm. I'm not always that <laughs> way. I'm a little bit more excitable than he is, but uh, he's definitely somebody that I try to keep in the back of my mind of the way he handled things and the way he did things at the racetrack and at the shop and tried to uh, model myself after that. All right, now you kind of surprised me with that answer because I was kind of th- <laughs> I was kind of thinking you were going to go back to Scott Zipadelli. <laughs> yeah, and, and if Scott's listening, he probably would have thought that too. <laughs> that was, that was great. Joke's uh, on you, Scott. And, and there's things, <laughs> and there's things about Scott. Now, let me tell you, there's things about Scott that I also, um, you know, use every day. And and, and Scott was uh, is, is a great crew chief, and he uh, he there's not very many people that work work as hard as Scott does, and he puts a lot of a lot of effort to it, and got a lot of passion for it. He loves racing. And, uh, and he taught me a lot of that, and he taught me a ton about uh, um, preparing for what it is to be a crew chief. But without even knowing it, 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 when I was younger and working for him, he did. He taught me a lot about what it takes to be a crew chief and, uh, and uh, having that responsibility of, of however many guys work underneath you, know, looking up to you. Not, not looking up to you, but looking to you for the answers almost. And uh, he, uh, he's definitely somebody I'm out of myself after all. So he, uh, like I said, I got to backtrack that a little bit, kid, guys. Work. <laughs> right, we, we've had him on the show before, so he's probably. He, I know he keeps up with us from time to time, so he might be listening. We'll just tag well, him yeah, in the there's show. A lot of, there's a lot of good attributes that you talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kevin, along the way, you, you, you're one of the younger guys. I don't know what your how your team is how what pe- what kind of guys you got on the team as far as age wise. Is it harder to relate to the older guys that are on the team? Or most of your guys just about the same age you are in that category? Actually, no. Um, my car chief has been in the industry for 15, 20 years. He's been, he was a tire changer for a long time. And uh, there's, actually, there's actually only one guy on my team younger than me. And that was something that I was worried about, uh, being able to be in the position only being 29 years old and having guys that are uh, 50, 45 years old working underneath me. But um, it's all about the guys that are around you, and there's no egos on our race team. Mm. The guys work, will do anything for me. I, I'll tell this to anybody. I'm, I'm as lucky as you can imagine to be in the situation I'm in because I have a group of guys that I could sit there and practice and ask them to flip the car upside down, and they do it about that and I. And, and you, can't, you, you can't put a price on that. I can't explain to you guys how like how important that is for Coochie to have a team like that behind him, and they support me 110%. Even though I'm younger, they... If I ask them to do anything, they'll do it. They support me. They're behind me. And that just gives me confidence when I go to the track every single day. And it is. It, I, I was worried about it to begin with, but it's probably not this easy everywhere. But my guys have made it extremely easy on me to be a younger crew chief. And they, uh, they do an incredible job every week. Well, let's talk about H. Scott Motorsports with Justin Mark. All, all as a whole, there's a, you know four or five teams there. How well do you work with the other crew chiefs? How much information do you all share? Do you do you spend a lot of time debriefing with them? Uh, we do. Uh, we all actually uh, we, we share an office, so that kind of makes it makes <laughs> you have to share information. Yeah, that will. Yeah, um, that work. It, it definitely does. Um, our general manager, Mike Greasy, uh, 
has us all working together all the time. Um, you know, we uh, we always compare post notes, and there's uh, there's always some guys that just um, you know naturally gravitate to each other more. Me and Chris Bowen, uh, don't start as crew chief. We seem to get along really well. All the guys in there are great, uh, but me and him seem to get along really good. Are always talking about things. Um, I was Mark McFarland's star chief last year. He's crew chief and JJ Haley now. So me and him are always talking, and then we got Marty Lindley and uh, Richmond Bird Dawson. Bird Dawson there also. And, we do. We all work together really well and, uh, and share information. When you get to the racetrack on Saturday and you're competing, and I want to win and William wants to win, and we want to take home the trophy, if at all possible, but, uh, you know, it's, it's important that all the eight thoughts with Justin Mark cars perform well. We all understand that. And uh, if you don't want to share notes, you don't want to um, tell other crew chiefs what you got going on or, or, or anything like that, you should probably stay to one part team because that's just the way it works. That's the way there's the most success for everybody. And, uh, and, there's always going to be a time where you need a little bit of help, either at the right. track, at the shop, or whatever. So, you know, we, we all just work together and, and work towards the common goal with everybody running good and help everyone go to the racetrack on the weekend and just race with each other as possible. But when you look at when you look at the H. Scott, I mean, the the team over there, all the teams, the names you just named a few minutes ago, Mike Grichy, uh, Marty Lindley. It's deep. I mean – I mean, you've got a lot of experience there, and, and that has to help you, too, to be able to pull from a guy like Marty Lindley and, and, and pull. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it would be ridiculous of me to think that I, that you know, to not try to use that that knowledge and experience to my advantage, and I have. And, and um, me and Marty, you know, me and Marty were kind of kind of one of the first three or four people at the shop uh, when they when they started the K&M team. So we, we've gotten to know each other really well, and I've been working with Marty for, for the whole time, and, and, and it is. It, it, it's awesome to have the experience like that, like you said, with Mike Reach and Marty, and, and all the guys there. I mean, Mark McFarland was an extremely successful race car driver, and now he's a successful crew chief. To be able to take from that experience has just has been nothing but helpful to me. And while I was learning up to this point, and since I've been a crew chief, I've been able to lean on them as well. And, uh, it's been great. You know, we all work together really, really well, and uh, it, it has been a huge help. Now, you got one guy over there that works on that 51 <laughs> that, uh, that you know, I, I'm kind of concerned about him, Dave Adams. I know you know who that is. Oh, yeah, and I understand the reason for concern. <laughs> <laughs> so when you see him tomorrow, when you see him tomorrow, so when you see him tomorrow, whenever you see him, you tell him that I'm really concerned about him. I can relate the message. And there's probably two other people out there that are too. <laughs> yeah, but he's a good guy. I tell you, I, I, you know, when he was up here at Langley, we got we uh, reconnected. We hadn't seen each other in a while, so it was really cool. And and I appreciate the you know getting connecting back with you again because you know. Uh, I, I remember you when you were over at the Wood Brothers or JTG or whatever, and I remember those days. And uh, yeah, so was, and that, that was a long time ago, but it was uh, that was a lot of fun, and, uh, and I appreciate you reaching out to me also. And uh, glad I could, could be on here with you guys. Today. So, Kevin, what got you started into racing? Uh, it's just it's what I always wanted to do when I was growing up, and uh, when I graduated high school, I, I moved up this way, and. Uh, was, was going to a Rowling Commerce Community College in uh, in uh, Concord and got just got hooked up with a guy who was in the class and he was volunteering at Venering Motorsports and Arca Team and I went there and uh, it's all I ever wanted to do so I just uh, I started volunteering for Arca Team and uh, and it's really on the job training more than anything mm-hmm. and uh, learning from people like the Venering family taking me in and, and teaching me how to work on race cars and teaching me the right way to work on race cars and then from there it's just a matter of um, working hard and moving up through the ranks and uh, sometimes you gotta have the right timing and the right opportunities for things to work out for me like they have but it's just a matter of working hard and learning as much as you possibly can from people that have been doing it for a long time and learning the right way to do things and then just like I said hopefully getting in the right situations like working for great companies like the Wood Brothers being able to have that name on my resume is, uh, is something I'm very fortunate about. Sure now over at uh, H. Scott I mean, you got to feel like you. I mean, that's like the Rick Hendricks of, of the K and N series. Now, does any of the the cup information and, and trickle down to you guys? Um, it does a little bit. Um, the cars are very different. Um, they look the same, which is great. But the the, the setup wise, they, there's not a ton of similarities. And the cup shop is based in Spartanburg, South Carolina. So, it, okay. I mean, they're right there for us if we ever need anything. Um, it was easier. The, the Xfinity program is closer to us, um, so it, there was more, more interchangeable information really. Uh, 
before uh, when, when there was a truck program with uh, with Turner Scott Motorsports, but right now there's not as much interchangeable information, but if we ever need anything, the cup program and the extended program for Red Death Force is definitely all one program, and, uh, and they're there for us if we need them, but uh, it's, like I said, there's just so many differences with setups and things like that that a lot of things don't work. Mm-hmm. Now, what's your favorite track on the schedule besides Langley being that was your last win here just a couple of weeks ago? Oh, wow. <laughs> favorite track. Um, I got two. Uh, Dover is, is a lot of fun. I always mm-hmm. enjoy going to Dover. It's just uh, it's such a different racetrack, and, uh, and it's just a whole other experience for the drivers and for, for us, and, and it's just uh, it's a lot of fun to go there. I really enjoy that. And then Bristol is just uh, it's an awesome place. Um, it's, uh, it's a cool place to go. It's a really special place to me, and uh, I, I enjoy Bristol and Dover probably the most out of them, all the places that we go. All right, now I'm gonna steer till f- towards food. Where's the place you look forward going to eat during the season? You know, is there one place when you go to this racetrack or whether that racetrack that you say we got to stop here and eat? What's that place? Favorite place to go eat? Oh man, um, I can't think off the top of my head of one particular restaurant. But anytime we're down, like when we go to Arna or we to Daytona, the last two years before, anytime I'm back home in Daytona and get good seafood and go to places where I ate when I was growing up, I, I always enjoy that. So going to the deck down on during Daytona or places like that where I ate a bunch in high school and growing up, uh, I always enjoy that. Yeah, the deck down under is great. I love that place. That's that's unbelievable. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you done made me hungry now. <laughs> Calvin, do you see yourself in the future? I know you, you want to advance more probably, but do you see yourself – Going back to the Cup Series, if, if the opportunity is good or the opportunity is right for you? Absolutely. If the opportunity was right, uh, that would be, uh, you know, the, the drivers have goals of, of getting to the Cup Series and, and crew guys and crew chiefs do as well. Um, that, that would absolutely be my goal. It would have to be something that uh, that was uh, that was the right situation, obviously. I would I always want to be, I always told myself, especially once I became a crew chief and got the opportunity to be a crew chief, that I would never never move up or try to take anything that I wasn't prepared for. So uh, when I feel like I'm prepared for that, I know that I can do the job uh, to the best of my ability. If that opportunity presents itself, I would absolutely love to be in that situation. So, uh, you know, just keep working and, and keep uh, keep learning, and uh, hopefully, hopefully that would be uh, in my future at some point. Well, you know, I think it's really neat that you are a crew chief in the K&N series now. I mean, to see – that group of folks that I saw at the Wood Brothers and JTG, or JTG, whatever it was then, to see you guys, I mean, my son and you and some of the other guys that have moved along and moved up and done other things. I mean, that's got to, that, you know, it does, it does an old guy like me good to see that. And, and it's, it's all, it is, it's really cool. And, uh, and, and it goes back to, like I said earlier, people up being around the right people and learning from them and, and we all grew up together, kind of, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking about your son, you know, we, we're all, we all just kind of grew up together and then and end up at these unbelievable opportunities of working for these great race teams. And, and I mean, sometimes you just kind of got to face yourself. Like, we work a lot of hours. I don't work kind of hours like son does, I'm sure. But, yeah. Uh, it, 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 you know, we work, we work a lot of hours. It's definitely a lifestyle. But uh, but sometimes, you know, you just got to kind of face yourself and go, are you kidding me? I really, I really made it here and I got this opportunity. And, uh, yeah. um, it's, it, it's really cool. It, it, it's awesome for us too to be able to see each other and see the success that we had, that we've gotten to have, and uh, hopefully it continues for a long time. Well, I hope so too. And I tell you what, I'm uh, I'm one of your biggest fans out there, so I, I watch what y'all do every week. And uh, so uh, I want you to keep up the good work, and hopefully we'll get to see you again real soon, and we'll have you back on again. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys having me on, and uh, thank you for your support. And uh, we're gonna try to keep uh, keep us rolling at New Hampshire next week. All right, man. We'll talk to you later, and we appreciate your time. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck, Kevin. All right. Bye-bye. I mean, those guys have got a great team. I mean, I can't imagine. you got five. Those are the five teams to beat when you show yeah. up at a K&N race. Yeah. They're yeah. always the, they're the top. You're going to say, all right, how, what's, what's the H. Scott cars doing? Or what are they doing? I mean, what it, are they running? And you look at it. Byron's won three races this year. Scott Heckert has won a race. Uh, Rico Abreu has won just, two races. Yeah, that's right. I mean, won one won. race just, and two poles. He's right. won the last two poles. So, I mean, that team 
is probably head and shoulders above yeah, what yeah. everybody else they've got. I mean, so it's got to be a wonderful thing for them. Well, I mean, I mean, the, the cup and the, nation, the Xfinity of affiliation, not to mention, I think when we were talking to with, uh, Dave last week, that how many older crew cup members that they have on yeah. the yeah. whole team is, is unbelievable. It really is. It really is. They've got, they've got a lot of experience, I mean, and they've got some really good people. Yeah, I mean, I mean they're, 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 I mean they're not grade, they're not eight grade they're not people. The people. Yeah, they're not people they yeah. that well I went and worked over there for a while and wasn't really successful. I mean I really you know I just was kind of a crew guy. Mike Greech is crew chief cup cars. Mm-hmm. You know I mean it, and Marty Lindley, look at the history Marty Lindley's yeah. got. I, I mean, mean you know that and speaks then, for itself. And uh, Chris Bowen he I mean Chris Bowen was a heck of a. Uh, late model crew chief up and down the East Coast. I mean, he had a bunch of people he worked mm-hmm. for. So, I mean, there's there's guys who have that experience and have done well with it. Mm-hmm. And Kevin is one of them. And, you know, seeing him at, at Langley, I told you, I think you were standing there with me. I said, that guy used to work with my son. So he did, he did work with Lee? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. And, you know, and I, they won the race at Langley. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I knew yeah. that. And I went over there and talked to him for a minute, you know, and, it took him a minute to realize who I was, and then he he found. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I remember now. He has his wife or girlfriend there? What his wife there, and they just had a baby. And I should have said right. something to him. Yeah, that's right. They just had a baby, and and you know, Kevin has kind of like my son. He's been through a little bit of things that you know could have derailed him along the way, mm-hmm. and he's look where he's at now. Yeah, he's worked his way. Yeah, he and he's way back. He's Good got himself. Him. He's got himself back where he's at. He's a great kid, and. I can say kid because he's younger than me. Yeah. I don't say he's a kid. Yeah. He's under 30. I guess we're all kids then, right? <laughs> yeah, we're all younger. <laughs> what, 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 what are you talking about? <laughs> What's he talking about? I, I don't know. <laughs> That's getting to be scary now. <laughs> but anyway, great show tonight. Great show. Thank we'll, everybody uh, for coming on. Glad Austin Dillon is okay. Yes. Um, and we'll keep up with the test tomorrow. Um, I have an insider at the test tomorrow <laughs> that's uh, going to keep me abreast of what all is going on. What, they're doing something with the spoiler and they're doing something with the front? Cutting the spoiler in half. Dude, they're cutting it down to nothing. I know. It's. I mean, I think it's going to be great, to be honest with you. And they're going to raise the front end up. I mean, the, the, the splitter in the front's got to come up. The spoiler's going down. Uh, they're supposed to be How high is the splitter going to be? The splitter is supposed to go up. I think Lee said it was going up. Right now they're dragging the goddamn ground, pushing I around. I think it's going to go garage. up. It's going to go up like a half inch. Oh, that's a okay. half inch more than what it is now. Mm. I mean, it's supposed. To, I mean, it's it's going to it's going to leave a little bit of room there for the air to get up underneath yeah. it. So they're not going to be able to. They can't get the car down and hardly any lower. No. So they're it's going to leave a gap, which I think is going to be great because it's going to leave it. it, it it's to have, essentially, it's to, they're trying to take downforce off the right. car. And more lead changes. Well, that okay. and the fact well, it's going to give the driver more throttle response. Yeah. They say they're going, you're going to feel it more in the throttle when you don't have the the car dragging behind you. you know? Right, and, and I and I I think that's a great thing because one, it's going to be less aero dependent, yeah. and and two, you got to drive the car. Anybody can go in there with a bunch of downforce and drive a car through the corner when you got all this air to catch the car. I heard this weekend. It was funny. Uh, one of the drivers was on one of the shows. They said, you could put a monkey in a car at Daytona and drive. Well, they must have had a hell of a lot of a monkeys monkey, in them yeah. cars. Because they want nobody driving them cars at Daytona. Yeah. Yeah. Just thank goodness nobody seriously That's got right. hurt. Yeah. That's and, exactly right. And, and Austin was okay. So. All right. Till next week. I won't be here next week. I'm on vacation next week. It ain't paid. Oh, yeah. It's, it's paid. But, uh. We'll see how things work with me not being around. <laughs> when you weren't around, it didn't we'll work. We'll probably sign a big sponsor. I know. Or <laughs> a one-day a deal. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I will be next Tuesday night. Wherever I am next Tuesday night, somewhere between here and Mississippi, I'm going to be on there. I'm going to be watching. <laughs> And I'm liable to call. <laughs> he probably won't be able to get him to hook up. You know? <laughs> yeah. no, I'll find a way. I'm sorry, boss. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you. All right, now.